the denim would work great because my initial uh, plan for it was to be like a, a something you put your hot things on, like a hot cup of coffee or a hot pan, and uh, it could be like a pot holder, but you would have to uh, obviously then put something inside for that extra heat, or maybe just um, extra padding, uh, something in of that sort. But let's see how it turns out. Scissors. I've made this so you just cut on that big black line. One thing that's really fun about designing is, at least I enjoy the challenge of figuring things out as I go along. That means sometimes I have to put the design on spoon flour and buy it more than one or two times to get out all the kinks and make sure that it's going to be something that most people can easily sew up. Uh, the whole purpose of the cut and sew, in my opinion, is to have something that's really quick and easy. It's an easy project, and you only have to buy one back quarter. Now, some of them, like this one here, if you want something um, heat resistant on the inside of it, or if you're going to use it for something else, you you know you may want to buy some extra material for that. Otherwise, everything is is right here. For what I want it for, the, the use I want it for, I have everything that I need right here. Most of us have extra fabrics in our drawers, so we could find something that you're not going to see what's inside. So it could be just extra fabric that you put inside there. I just bought myself these new scissors. I never have bought such a, a nice pair of scissors, but they were on sale. Guggen, Guggenheim, they're super sharp. My dad used to say, you really can't do a good job if you don't have the right tools. And that is so true. My dad was a master builder of just about anything he wanted to build. <clears throat> a funny story. When I was younger, my husband had died and I had two small children. And we moved out of Alaska down to what we called the lower 48. And um, I bought this little ranch. It was eight acres uh, near town so the kids could go to school and we could have animals. And it was a little rundown, you know, especially the fields, the fences, the barn. It must have had two feet of old manure that had that was so dry and that had to be chopped out. But anyway, as I was trying to build the fences, I knew that uh, there was these metal posts you can get, and then you just drive those into the ground, <clears throat> and then you um, take rolls of wire, whatever kind of wire you want to get for keeping livestock in. And uh, so I bought some of those metal posts and I was out there. I, I don't know how many hours I spent. I had like this big hammer, right? And I was so frustrated after hours of trying to drive those posts in. It was like, I just couldn't do it. It was like, man, you know, I'd watch dad do it. He was like, get him in. But I didn't remember all the tools that he had when he was building fence. So... Eventually, I gave up, and I went in, and I called Dad, and I talked to him. <laughs> he was laughing. He said, well, you have to have a fence driver. Well, a fence driver is this big tube. It's real heavy metal. You slip it over the top of the uh, fence, the metal fence post, and then you let the, the weight of the big metal tube as you're 
bringing the pipe you know, you're, it, it's like this, so you you put it over this metal pipe and it goes up inside and then it's closed at the top. So every time it has two big handles on the side, the fence driver does. So you put it over the top and then you just slam it down and that weight, and I mean, putting those fence posts was like nothing then. Each one of them went right into the ground. Even each, some of the ground was pretty hard, but that was the way you built your fence, not with a hammer. The hammer was not getting it. My point is that if you're going to do crafts or if you're going to do whatever it is, you need to have the right tools and you need to take care of the tools so that they last you a long time. Put your tools away in the right spot, even here in the sewing room. You know, it's really important because I, I, don't, I don't have that much patience to want to run around and look for everything all the time. I want to know where it's at so that I can use it immediately especially if I've got an idea and I want to get busy with it <clears throat> you save yourself a lot of time and frustration if you keep your things organized that doesn't mean it has to be perfect I'm no no means perfect in organization but I do keep things workable and it makes it so much more fun I find doing the different crafts uh, very soothing it, it makes a person feel good when you've built or created something yourself. And the thing with the fat quarters is even if you don't feel like you're very creative, most of the work is already done for you. It's already, the design is already there. You didn't have to pick out all the choices of colors and fabric. It's all on one fat quarter. And you get to do these different things really fast and easy for gifts or just for yourself. Or maybe give them away to charities. <clears throat> And I like finding things that people love to do. It really, that's part of the profit to me, is finding things that other people will enjoy. Like these little camper glampers. It's such a, a big thing right now for people to, to get into the glamping camping. And I've had, I had a little vintage trailer. I've had a couple of them. Yeah, I used to drive my kids and we'd go camping with a, it was a little, low liner that we had fleet no it wasn't the fleet craft it was a different but i had a fleet craft too okay my pieces are already cut up so now here they are you'll have a front this is the front now what's interesting is this is a front for a american trailer and this would have been right here would be you know the hitch and your propane tank but in the UK, it's you would call it a caravan, and the door would be obviously on the other side. So, if you made when when I was first making these designs, um, I made one, and then thought I'd you know, flip the design, and then that that way, then it put the door on the wrong side. Oh no, I couldn't do that. And then I found out, oh well, in the UK they're just called caravan, so oh, leave it that way. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to put these right sides together. And I'll show you again. Um, the front side. Maybe I'll go ahead and do this other thing first. Anyway, here I have right sides together. That means the the <clears throat> right side is in the inside of the camper. Before we do any stitching, though, I want to make my tabs and my window toppings. The window topping looks like this when it's all cut out. I'm going to go ahead and fold this. Um, I'm going to fold and iron these. I'll fold this down. I'll fold this up. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and iron it so that it's kind of like the tab. Let me make the tab first and then show you what it looks like. I'm going to iron it first. Holding this three times, one on each side. The 
if you wanted this tab to be wider, you would, uh, you could easily, instead of cutting right on that black line, give yourself some more room and cut it out of more of the material surrounding it. Mine's going to be a thin tab. So that's how it looks now. Folded three times, so that now all I have to do is sew down the center. stitched. Now I'm going to do the same with this. And this is where some estimation comes in because I'm not really sure how I want this in the end. This is really a I have just folded it under the top and under on the bottom. I'm going to stitch that. trying to decide whether to cut it off there or just run across the bottom. So I decided to just run across the bottom and go ahead and do it that way. It may end up that I want to have tucked under those ends, but since I'm going to be cutting it into four pieces, I don't think it's going to matter. I have already marked this with the black so that there's actually four pieces. And I'm going to cut right down the center of the inner black ones. I may have to do that little one on the end too, I'm not sure. I'll show you my thoughts. Let's see here. Now these were made to fit on 
on the, I don't know if you can kind of see this, but they're made to fit across the top of the window. But obviously we don't want the whole thing up there. I mean, you could probably do something to just leave it that way, but I think this is going to work out so cute. I'm going to have to sew the top and the bottom right now to get that accordion look. I wonder if I could do one of them later. I might just have to do the bottom. Just talking out loud, rambling as I go along to get this design the way I want it. Like to keep all those little threads cut off. I know some people just work around those little threads, but they drive me nuts. So Yeah, I did that as accordion. As you can see, I, I sewed that part, and then I did it like accordion. Just folding that. Now you can do it any way you want to, but that kind of makes an accordion look. And now I'm going to go ahead and stitch it on the top of one of these windows. Stitch that down and then stitch the next one down. Let's try that. Show you what I did here. You can see that I've stitched the inside of the first accordion. Now I'm going to pull that down and I'm going to stitch out the very top. Again, you can use these little toppers any way you want to. If you just want to fold them in half and put them over the window, that would look cool. You can do whatever you want to.
course, this does have to be done before you sew up your camper. What do you think? See that? Now it has like, yeah, there you can see it. I think that's cute. I'm gonna iron that. Maybe I'll just do that on the back ones. We'll do the front ones a little bit different. What do you think? I have my iron right here. I can just jump up and iron something really fast. And actually, I do all my crafting right here in my bedroom. I have a small space, but I find it works out pretty good. And I, I like thinking about my stuff. I mean, even at night when I'm laying in bed, I can sit here and set up a project, and I can be thinking of how I can improve on it or how I can do it better or whatever one thing I can see right now you'd have to be careful of <clears throat> you can see I'm putting this on the front window you can see how close it is to the to the easement that I've given I've given like a, a quarter to an eighth of an inch easement for when we're sewing the campers together so you want to be careful this is not I don't think you're going you're to want that in there it might not matter but I think I'm gonna try to get that so it's not quite onto that line. Okay, now this one, <clears throat> now we have both of them. Okay, again, there's the, the folded one we have. This one in the front is going to be like a, you know, open so it can be lifted up and down. So we got this open, and then there's the folded. I like both of them. So I think I'll do the other side the same. Let me get that done. Let's see. Get that on. I'll put on the front. This is the back one.
I was looking at the time. Looks like 28 minutes so far. This is the yes, this is the back window. Make sure I get the right windows on the right one. One thing with these sharp scissors you have to watch out for is cutting your fabric really easy. But otherwise it sure makes it more of a breeze to do that. Okay, that's about the size. Last one. 
last one. I didn't know when I was designing this whether these are going to be any problem for stability um, on the back side. You know, like maybe it, it would be kind of bumpy there and if you were putting just a coffee cup or something, whether that would matter. And I can see that it's not going to matter. I mean, this is a pretty good size pattern anyway. You probably can use it for a pot holder. I think it'd be great just decorative to hang on the wall, especially if you have a little lamp or camper. I got that side done. So you know we have the, the little visors. I don't think I've seen this on any other patterns. Woohoo. Something new. The reason for the design, which is interesting, you'll notice that it has clouds and little rain drops. And this side has the rainbow with the clouds and the rain. Is it because if you have camping, it doesn't matter if you're if you're out uh, in the woods and it's all stormy and rainy and you're all cozy in your little camper and, and with your family or, or even if you're by yourself, it's a, it's a sign of a rainbow of promise and that there's always a rainbow at the end of the storm. And you can remember that and have hope in all situations, and especially if you're out camping. So it's really a message of hope and encouragement. Uh, the design actually came to me when I was sleeping. I was I dreamed this in my mind, which I always attribute to God giving me inspiration. And so I write it down as soon as I think of it. Now here's where our little tag comes in. We want to know exactly where this is going to go because it's going to be inside of our camper so again right sides together and we want it in the front of the camper we don't want it on the back because I just figured that that if you're hanging it you'd want to hang it that way so right down here at the bottom and you can position it where you want but I'm going to put it in this corner down here where the little where I'd had the black spot and oops I'm almost did that wrong you want to have it so this loop part is inside and the little tail part is on the sticking out so when you stitch around this you're gonna stitch that little um, hanger on the inside and we'll clip that and clip around my camper where I'm gonna be sewing I think I'll leave part of the bottom open for turning it inside right. And like I said, now you, and I'm even, you know, I think I probably should have went ahead and cut out a piece to put inside, but this is my prototype, so <clears throat> I'm not putting that anything in it unless I decided I could put some stuffing in there. But I think I'm going to kind of want it flat for what I want it for. And here's my clips are on there just showing me where I'm going to go. I'm going to leave this part between where my finger right here is and the tire. And I'm going to leave that area to turn it inside out. But otherwise I'm going to stitch clear around the, the rest of the camper. And all you have to do is stay anywhere within the last two black lines all around there. Whether you want to do an eighth of an inch or a, a fourth of an inch, that's up to you. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and start mine at the top. going around corners I just pull with this hand and push with this hand and kind of ease it around and if I see that it's still not going straight then I'll just stop have the needle down turn a little bit I'm going around that tire is what I'm going around right now was a sharp corner. That's why I put the needle down and then turned it. Coming up on the tab, the loop. And I will, when I get up there, I'm going to go back and forth a couple times because that gets more high stress. And you don't want to have to have you repairing that, so. Again, easing around a little corner there. like those clips. I mean, I used to have to use pins all the time. I hated using the pins. I like the clips. By the way, I've never been um, a professional seamstress. In fact, my specialty was actually sculpting. I like to, I had made freeform bowls. I like to do it the freeform way, and it was all in seaside. But Things change, and we had to sell our home and, and move into an apartment. So I couldn't have my kilns and stuff anymore. It's, it's not a biggie. I mean, life changes. Changes are inevitable. So just work with it. Just work with the changes, and you find something else. And that's when I decided to start sewing more. My sister's actually an excellent seamstress, but her eyes aren't as good. I used to have her do all my, my sewing, but she doesn't do as much now. So first thing I had to do was get rid of my cheap machine, which was constantly breaking down, and I was getting too frustrated. So I, with the help of my daughter, I got this new FAF Passport 2. I really love it. I love all the... the it's simple because I don't want too much gadget, and yet it does have some really cool little stitches. And so now every time I design things, because I design for surface designs, that's um, surface is any kind of surface. Like my main thing I'm doing is for spoon flour. You can only buy my things on spoon flour on the fabrics, but they also have products now too that you can get my design on, as well as Redbubble and Society6. So I put my designs on there. My specialty in spoon flour is really making these fat quarters where it's a do-it-yourself project all on that fat quarter. And uh, I've been making, well, I'll just show you a couple. I've been making, you know, the little hipster bags. This is one of the little hipster bags. And you, you, you hook them onto your jean tabs. And so when you're walking, you don't have to have hands. And it comes complete with the lining. So the little kid is on one fat quarter, and here's everything you need, except for, you know, your hardware. I mean, you're going to have to pay for, you know, the little clips, whatever kind of clips you want it. And if you want any embellishment, like this one here, has a, an antique, it's a very old button. So I just use that as weight. And inside is a, is a kind of a French coffee shop, shows a lady with a little dog. And it's all right there on the fat quarter, so you don't have to buy the material extra. And you can get it on cotton or some lightweight linen or whatever you want to make them out of. And I've made a, a lot of those. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight 
of these designs on Spoon Flower now. And the dog walking bag. That was my other thing. Really happy with this one. And this also is all on one fat quarter. It's not lined because you need for the leash. And what's really cool, the dog walking bag has an area for your little baggies. It has a big pocket, it has a foam pocket, and it has the little pocket on the outside for cookies, of course, cookies for your dog. And what's unique about this little bag is that the strap comes off and it is a leash and collar. So if you saw a dog who's gotten loose from its owner and you don't have an extra collar and leash, there's one right here. Or if your leash breaks, you have an extra leash you can use here. So these have been really popular also. And I have a number of these designs too. This one is my little Corgi design. And, um, but I have one with multiple breeds on it and some beautiful black and aqua. So those are all on Spoonflower too. That's why I've been excited about this. It's been a lot of fun to, the challenge of coming up with these designs. Anyway, let me get back to the project here. <clears throat> we're almost where we're going to get to the side where I want to leave enough opening to get that. Sometimes I don't leave enough opening and then it's a pain to turn things in and side out. strings and we're going to go around and cut off the excess. There's how the little tabs are sticking out so that'll all be cut off. I'll just go around this and cut this down to closer to the stitching but do not get too closer then that's exactly where it will it will come apart. So you want to trim off the excess just so it turns out and lays nice. really think I can't emphasize enough but the next one I buy because I think I will buy another one of these I would like to make a couple of gifts is I'm gonna try that denim I think that would be perfect for this especially this design too now, I may make some more of these if people like them then I'll make some other designs on the camper you know Maybe have a pink camper and a red camper. I do listen to people's suggestions. I mean, if it's outlandish, I'll <laughs> probably won't. It has to be something that I, I think will sell. But my purpose is to make things that people would like. Color combination. into the hand sewing area, obviously. I'll turn this inside out and iron it, show you what it looks like. Remember when you're turning things inside out to run your fingers down all around the corners and everywhere. Like especially the little wheel well, you want to make sure that gets all turned inside out right. Oh, I am just so pleased with these little window coverings. I and mean, this is just adorable. I can see doing these in different colors. It's going to be fun to make some more of these. If you sell crafts, 
you could be like one of the first in your area to have some of these designs and you can't get them in the stores or anything which most time we can't even go in the store so <laughs> buying online the new way right i'm not particularly happy with it i can see the pluses of it but i like to feel and touch things so as an older person <clears throat> Except that I've been forced to buy a lot of stuff now on Amazon, which is a shame because a lot of the little mom and pop stores are going out of business. Some of my favorite crafting supply places. <clears throat> okay. And the reveal. There it is. This is what you hang it by. Of course, it, if you was to quilt that, oh my gosh, that would be so cute. Or maybe do some design machine stitch around on the outside or something even. <clears throat> or just put some more fabric inside. And then the other side. You can see how cool those window toppers are. I'm very happy with that. And all I have to do now, and we won't do this while on the video, but of course I'm going to go ahead and, and fold this inside and then hand stitch, or I could top stitch it too. There's not very much fabric here. Or I can even still, I could put a layer of some kind of, a, what do you call that, where it's just some, uh, some sort of a stuffing, but it comes flat. Anyway, I will finish it up and get some photos of it but thank you for tuning in and it's been enjoyable to have my tea and and talk about my product i hope you enjoyed this and had fun and i hope you try one of these make your day make some gifts or make some things to sell at craft shows i do allow my things now my designs to be sold so you can make it and you can sell it you just can't sell my design but you could make things out of the things that you buy on spoon flour with the fabrics and you can sell that and a lot of people are thanks again you have a great day and a great week many hugs